Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 and the final part of this experiment where we're taking a look what would happen if you had 3,500 legends loaded into the Football Manager 2018 database. Now up to now we've gone eight years into the future um, and to put some sort of context on that Thierry Henry at the moment the highest average rated player in the Premier League and he got 28 goals is now 25 years old in five years time he will be 30 years old other players will have retired and we'll start to be able to or we'll stop being able to keep track of a lot of the legends as they start to drop out the game so I think five years into the future will take us to a nice final end point to see which teams have benefited from these changes now before we do go ahead make sure to subscribe hitting that button down below so you get all of the latest experiments there will be a brand new experiment out tomorrow um, involving England and the World Cup so make sure you are subscribed for that and do drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed this series up to now um, but let's go forward five years in time and see how the various clubs have got on how the world is looking um, for top players and top clubs and also see how the World Cup European Championship Champions League all those good stuff have all progressed so let's go forward and see who's won the league well, we are now five years into the future, and this is how the Premier League looks at, in the year 2030, with all of this having happened. The Premier League, the undisputed leader in the competition reputation rankings. You can see United have won yet another total, 10 points clear of Leeds, with Stoke City now in third place. They've been making huge transfers and have progressed enormously to get to a point where they are consistently in the Champions League. Interesting to see that Harry Kane, the top scorer in the Premier League, um, Thierry Henry still doing very well, George Best still in there doing well, and Schmeichel with the most clean sheets. So still some very familiar faces in there. If we have a look at this league table though, and go back to where we left off, you can see United won that league ahead of Manchester City, and then Leeds and Spurs were just behind United the next season. Well, I say just, they were nearly 20 points behind them. United have absolutely sewn up this league. You can see six points clear of Liverpool. But then Chelsea did manage to come through and actually win the league ahead of Manchester United. The first team in probably eight to ten years to actually do that. And you can see currently captained by a young John Terry. They've got Claude Makalele in there. Six and a half million pound John Terry. Um... Claude Makélélé in there, what a legend he was for Chelsea as well. I still remember when he scored his first ever professional goal against Bolton from the penalty spot. Um, but Claude Makélélé back in the team. If we have a look at the squad that they managed to do this with, um, it is a very impressive one. And there are Koke's in there, 29 years old from Spain. David Beckham is playing there at the moment with Yapstam. A young Petr Cech was there as well. Um, Mikel Salgado in there as well. But let's have a look at David Beckham and the career that he's managed to have. 31 years old now, playing on the right flank for Chelsea still. Has just moved from Manchester United on a free transfer after a long time where he had sometimes good assist returns. This period here, um, three seasons out of four, he seemed to do very well. I'm actually a little bit uh, curious as to what his biography looks like now, not his injuries. Um, if we have a look at his biography... Uh, you can see he's named in the Chelsea Best Eleven, runners up in the Europa League this time as well. He's won 28 competitions with Manchester United, which says it all, including a couple of Champions League titles as well. Um, so he had a great career uh, the second time around with United, in addition to the first. But Chelsea there, managing to take the title. Um, the following year, it was Man City who came through and took it. Two years in a row, United have missed out, but there was only... Four points separating the top six in this title race. Probably the best ever finish to an English top division. Um, but we can see here Carlo Ancelotti, the manager of Chelsea. Uh, Vesico and Marco Van Basten in there. They've got Alexi Sanchez, Frank Lampard, Young again and back in the game. Romario's in there. Um, there's Frank Lampard's stats for you. Brilliant career there. 85 appearances for England as well. Um, Mikel Balak's in there, Marco Van Basten must have had a brilliant career with them, 31 years old and a striker here. Started out in Milan, moved to City for £92 million, consistently 7.5 and above and getting 20 plus goals a season, a fantastic goal scoring return there um, from Marco Van Basten. Uh, Redondo's in there, Piquet's in there, Hazard's all the way down in the middle of the pack here because they just have so many good players. But they have managed to win the Premier League ahead of Leeds, who were unlucky not to do better um, and not to win a title, really, because they've managed to come up 
with the legends that they have, and they've done a great job. They've got Thierry Henry at the club, Mikel Essien, Gareth Bale, Edgar Davids, Dwight York is there. Um, I'm quite interested to see what Dwight York's record is like. Uh, £41 million, 129 goals and 125 counts for uh, Trinobago there. Uh, Trinobago, Trinobago? Trinidad and Tobago. Um, misreading his nationality. But you can see he's only just moved to Leeds from Aston Villa. Um, he's not had the best return in the league, but he seems to be doing quite well for Leeds there. Uh, Wayne Bridge is back in there as well. Fortunately, not in the same team as John Terry this time. Um, but a pretty good squad there. Gordon Strachan in there as well. And then Liverpool just missing out. The final season, though, it was United who came back and managed to win the league. You can see their dominance here. From the very first season, they won every single title um, before Chelsea and then Man City broke their dominance. But they have managed to come back and take yet another um, Premier League title. Currently managed by Miguel Munoz. Bobby Charlton still their captain obviously they've got Pele in the team as well it's an unbelievable squad that they've managed to put together um, with the likes of Paul Scholes in there as well um, but there is Pele, George Best and Duncan Edwards down there who somebody asked me to take a look at I mean look at Pele's return there fantastic rating since joining from Santos he's had a brilliant career now with Manchester United George Best of course been at United his whole career um, and he's had a fantastic return of assists as well as goals. Um, and then if we have a look at Duncan Edwards, um, who is able to play pretty much anywhere through the middle. Um, and you can see he's had a very good time there. Um, and then also Bobby Charlton, of course. Um, he has had another great career there. 7.62 average rating in the league. Lots of goals, lots of assists as you would expect from Bobby Charlton. But that is how the Premier League has managed to shape up. It was United dominating from start to finish pretty much with Chelsea and City getting titles. It's so unfortunate that Leeds and Stoke didn't manage to get one, but not entirely unsurprising that Liverpool failed to deliver a title because this game seems to have an inherent bias against Liverpool when it comes to winning the title. But we can see here in Serie A, it is Milan with the title this time around. Juventus, Inter and Napoli also up there. AC Milan have a seriously good team. They've got Shevchenko in there, Rude Hullet in there. Um, I've got to look at Shevchenko's returns, really. He's only just joined them, actually, from Dinamo Kiev. So um, the game imitating life there, but his return at Dinamo Kiev, unbelievable. 366 league goals in 413 league games. When you add the assists on that, it's even better. Um, absolutely world-class striker there. Alexander Hleb back in the game as well. But Rude Hullet, the big name left to take a look at here, um, can play pretty much anywhere across midfield, and he's had another unbelievable career. I mean, the average rating of this game's performances must have absolutely shot up. Um, I think I saw Paolo Maldini there. No, that was Gianni Rieva. I'm not actually sure where Maldini has gone. If we try and have a look, he's now at Real Madrid. Um, Paolo Maldini had a fantastic career. Um, and it seems to have done the same again. A £115 million transfer for a centre-back to Real Madrid there. That's how good a player he is. Um, Juventus, of course, had done well for so long. Currently managed by Pep Guardiola. If we have a look at their team, you can see Alessandro Del Piero, now 30 years old in the game. But a brilliant return from him. The depth of this squad is really quite impressive. Because you've also got Pavel Nedved, Pirlo. Ashley Cole, Xavi's in there, Rio Ferdinand as well. I mean, I'm sure Xavi has been absolutely sensational for them. He started out at Barcelona, moved to Valencia on a free transfer. Not sure why Barcelona let that happen, but he had an exceptional career at Valencia before then also joining Juventus on a free transfer. Very happy to just run down his contract, Xavi, for whatever reason. Um, but some very good players. Gianfranco Zola's in here as well. Rudy Vola down there as well. Uh, Zola, the little magician um, or wizard. You can see here, he started out at Chelsea and then £54 million transfer to Leeds before a £60 million transfer to Juventus back in his native Italy. But you can see why... Um, with the likes of Stojkovic in there as well. Why Juventus have done as well as, 
as they have in the Italian league for so long. We've also got Inter in here as well. They've got some unbelievably good players in here. Ronaldo, Robin, Zanetti, Vieri, Lota Mateus. But then even further down, they've got Bobby Moore. Eusebio is in there as well. It really is just absolute strength in depth. Um, if we have a look at Bobby Moore, who's been playing at centre-back um, for them, then you can see he has had a brilliant time since leaving West Ham for nearly £50 million. Spent the rest of his career at Inter. Eusebio as well, another fantastic player who can play pretty much anywhere down the centre. Um, he left Benfica for £68 million, Struggled in Italy for a while. Um, he never really got that far over the 7-point rating, which is a little bit surprising for a player as brilliant as he is. And then let's just quickly have a look at Christian Vieri, who was one of my favourite strikers when I was younger. Entire career in Inter's at Colours, but he's got 140 goals though in 287 games. I have to assume there have been injuries in that career, and as you can see, an awful lot of them as well. But no long-term injuries, which means that he's probably just not been playing ahead of the likes of Ronaldo, which is not too unsurprising, but Ronaldo unbelievable return there 317 goals in 476 league games getting over 8 point uh, uh, rating in every league season almost um, so he has been absolutely sensational for them the likes of Napoli, Lazio, Fiorentina and Roma also doing very well in this league um, but if we go over to the Spanish league we'll be able to see who has been doing the best here you can see Real Madrid have won the most recent title with 103 points just remember, I didn't actually look at the past winners for Serie A, but it's pretty much just the two Milan clubs and Juventus. Uh, Milan are doing well, but more recently Juventus uh, taking control of that league. So if we go and have a look at La Liga, then you can see Real Madrid at the moment winners. But you've also got Valencia popping in there with a win and then finishing second last season as well. Um, Real Madrid, the standout team in this league, though, um, Currently not got a manager, but they do have Cristiano Ronaldo now, 30 years old at the club. Um, having gone to Chelsea from Sporting, he has eventually ended up at Real Madrid. Um, he just seems destined to land at that club. Rico Stobe in here as well, German striker. He's actually a regen, um, having started out in Germany playing for Dresden. He... Is he a regen? He must be a regen there, or a creative player, but somehow he's outshining the likes of Ronaldo and Zinedine Zidane, um, who has been with Real Madrid his entire career, which is a bit unfair. He probably should have been at some of his earlier clubs. Raul, of course, also in there. Iker Casillas, Paolo Maldini, this is where he is. Um, and then other big players down here, Bern Schneider. Um, and then Franz Beckenbauer also down here. You can see Tom Finney right at the bottom of that list. But Franz Beckenbauer, £125 million signing from Bayern Munich. Unbelievably consistent his entire career with very few injuries as well. Um, but you've got the likes of Bertie Votes down here as well. Pushkas, of course, now getting on a little bit. But he has had an unbelievable return as well. Uh, Lev Yashin, um, not... The same Yashin, I don't believe, though, because he's in as a centre-back. Uh, Alfredo Di Stefano, um, of course, very good for Real Madrid in real life, but also two games, matching that record that he had, which I believe Ronaldo broke at Real Madrid. And then, of course, the legend that is Sir Tom Finney, left Preston for £62 million from the Championship very early on, before they really got going in the Premier League. But he's had an unbelievable career. And the number of goals so many of these players have got shows why Real Madrid have been so dominant for so long. Um, and their captain at the moment, Bertie Votes, obviously they've got Ika Casillas back at the club as well. But we need to see why Valencia have done as well as they have. And it's because they've got Alex Ferguson in charge of the club. But Pablo Aymar back at the club. Um, if we look at his stats here, um, absolutely brilliant. For a team that hasn't been doing that well, that consistently, um, they've got Joaquin back at the club as well. Uh, Alvaro Recoba, I remember when he was one of the best and most deadly strikers in the world. He has bounced around a lot, going out to Fenerbahce of all teams before ending up back at Valencia after leaving Inter where he was barely getting any game time. Probably hasn't uh, developed as much as you would imagine. Fernando Hierro in here as well um, obviously must have left Real Madrid at some point um, for £10.75 million to go to the Czech Republic 
which is a bit of an odd one, but he never played for Real Madrid, which is why he's moved on. He was just never given that ability to really develop as a player. Um, so interesting, but he seems to have put Valencia and done very well for them. Barcelona, of course, we have to look at them. They've got Cafu uh, right back, but we've got Lionel Messi there leading the line, £69 million uh, valuation, still only 29 years old at the moment, um, and getting a brilliant record there. Ronaldinho, of course, also at the club. Um, his goal contributions out of this world. One season he got 20 league assists in 37 games, which does sum him up a bit. Andres Iniesta back as a young man as well, also chipping in with his consistency. Not quite as high an average rating, but when you've got players like Cafu coming in from right back, um, you can see he's consistently getting five or six assists every year. Um, Seydorf, Michael Laudrap in there. Um, Puyol as well. Kurt Zuma for some reason still at the club. Johan Cruyff now somewhat older, um, but no doubt just as influential playing at centre-back, it seems, at the moment as his best position and not getting the best average rating as a result. Absolutely playing in the wrong area there for them. I really like Cafu's picture in this game as well. And then Atletico Madrid have dropped down, but you can see from the past winners, it is mostly Real Madrid. A couple of Barcelona as well, um, and Valencia more recently. In the Bundesliga, I'm going to start to go through this a little bit quicker. If we look at the past winners, it's just Bayern Munich. They have absolutely dominated this league from day one. They've got a brilliant setup. They've got Steven Gerrard at the club now, £52 million. Joined from Liverpool for £64 million, with Luis Figo in central midfield alongside him. Well, they're apparently now playing as a centre-back, which, again, when they reposition these players at centre-backs, it does massively impact them. But I'm not sure why they're doing that. They've got Gerard and Figo playing at centre-back. Cannavaro and Nesta also in the team. It's completely unnecessary. Jürgen Klinsmann at the club as well. Uh, I just saw Torsten Frings there, which is another blast from the past for me. Um, but Klinsmann been getting a good goal every other game. Diego Costa's there. Um, Jens Lehmann in goal. Um, it's a very, very strong side that. And you can see why Bayern have been dominating as long as they have. But you've got Dortmund here as well. Back up to second place. Jurgen Klopp back in charge of the team. But they've got Modric, Ibrahimovic in there as well. Georgi Hadji is at the club. Mario Goetz is back as well. Was a young player. Uh, Stoikov, Stoikov, if I can get my words out as well, at the club. Just having a look if any of the older players are still there. Um, but Zlatan Ibrahimovic now the captain here. And Stuttgart managed to finish third in the most recent season. And this is their team that they managed to do it with. It's not the best team in the world, but they do have Closer and Kluivert at the club. Patrick Kluivert, 30 years old now. Um, obviously started out at Ajax, £21.5 million transfer. But never look at that goal return. He's been playing as a centre-back. That's why... There's this thing in it. Well, it must be glitching out where it's telling everybody to just play as a centre-back. Um, but that is the history of the Bundesliga. Liga, I imagine, not too much change here. Monaco, still the best team. They've got Michel Platini, David Trezeguet in the team as well, of course. Um, brilliant French striker. Not at the best time with injuries over the past couple of seasons, but got a good return last season. Sonny Anderson's in there. Patrick Vieira absolute rock in central midfield and when you've got Trezeguet and Van Nistelrooy ahead of you you're always always going to do well um, other big names in here obviously Lilian Turam, Pep Guardiola as a player also in the team and they've got Laurent Blanc, Ronald Koeman, Abidal I saw there as well this is an enormous squad that they've put together um, but they have done incredibly well with it Getting a few titles in the most recent seasons. Marseille have dropped off a little bit. They've got Jean Tigner as their key player as well. And right at the top, you can see Paul Pogba's in there, Fabian Barthez, Deschamps. That is why they have been doing very well. Um, but this league, not quite fully loaded up for us. If we have a look at the Eredivisie, uh, you can see Ajax absolutely tearing apart this league, as you would expect. They've got Mark Overmars, Diego Motta, Frank de Boer, Van Ginkel. Uh, Blint in there, Danny Blint of course, uh, not Daily Blint, Van der Beek, Jimmy Floyd, Hasselbank in the game again once more. The number of players that Ajax must have had at the start of this save uh, would have set them up for everything else, but he actually started out at Chelsea before going out on loan to so many different clubs. Still getting a decent return at pretty much all of them, but never got a sniff at Chelsea before going to Ajax there. So... 
Um, quite interesting the way that's worked out. But you can see Ajax, a really dominant team. Just worth having a look at Feyenoord, who've consistently been in second place. And you can see they've got Vincent Company at their club. Um, Wesley Schneider is there as well. Um, but not too many great names, which is why they haven't been able to dislodge Ajax from the top. Now, if we have a look at the Scottish Premiership, is a league that everybody was screaming at me to take a look at. You see Celtic have still been dominating this. They've got Diego Simeone in charge, and Henrik Larsson, of course, one of the most famous recent legends for Celtic. Been there his entire career, 30 goals in 34 games and 29 as well. His return, unbelievable, as it always was. In Scotland, but they've also got Marek Hampshire, they've got Mark Hughes in here as well. John Dole Thomason, famous Newcastle striker from when I was a kid there, having left Feyenoord for 25 million, he's gone to Scotland, uh, Scotland, and they are paying a huge amount of money there. Gabriel Einzer is there as well. Cameron Aze, uh, Avar Maratas in there, Grimaldo. Uh, a few modern players alongside everybody else. They've got Brian Robson in the team as well. Um, it's a very impressive squad that Celtic have put together. Um, picking up Brian Robson on a free from United. Rangers never quite able to keep up with them here. Um, but they do have some good players as well. Not as many um, or as high value ones as we saw at Celtic. But quite a few um, Scottish legends in there. So it's all about Celtic in the Scottish Premiership. And I think that was probably be it for where we look at the major leagues. I think there's not too many other big ones in there. Um, that I'm going to spend much time on. So if we go and have a look at the Champions League next, uh, we can see the current holders, Barcelona. Here are the past winners. Leeds did win it in 22-23, as we saw in the last part. But generally, it's the big clubs doing well. Barca, Real Madrid, Man United, Juventus. Not very many surprises in there. A few of the smaller clubs did manage to make it there. Well, not smaller clubs, but um, not the global superpowers did manage to get in there. But overall... Is pretty much as you would expect. And if we just drop back and have a look at the quarterfinals for the past few seasons and see if there were any surprises. You've got Spartak Moscow in there. Bit of a surprise there. Uh, Köln and Stuttgart getting through HSV. Partizan Belgrade also managing to make it uh, to the final. And they've got some incredible players in here as well. Mihailovic in there. Now getting on quite a bit. Um, and then Vukotic. Let's have a look at this Mance guy who's done so well up front for them um, and you can see there 26 goals in 25 league games 29 and 23 233 and 271 tearing up the Serbian league there um, if we go back again Spurs managed to make it there Dinamo Kiev managed to make it there from the Ukraine um, and you can see Kovacic has become a very good player for them Konoplyanka still there as well um, they've got Ozzy Diaz in there as well the former Spurs legend um, started out at Spurs, moved to Wolves and then moved to Dinamo Kiev after a pretty unsuccessful spell at Wolves. Um, but otherwise, not too many surprises in there. Red Star Belgrade, of course, did do very, very well. And you can see their time there. Their team there, they've got Vidic in there as well. Um, and Rajkovic down there as well. Quite a few players. Stankovic as well. Quite a lot of Serbian legends. It's interesting how they've managed to get the nationalities right on some of the former Yugoslavian um, players, but I suppose maybe Wikipedia did an awful lot of that for them. If we have a look quickly at the Europa League, you can see Red Star Belgrade have managed to win it, Stoke have more recently won it, a couple for Chelsea, Juve, Juve managed to take it as well after presumably getting knocked out of the top division, but you can see they've got Ryan Giggs, Mohamed Salah in there as well, Roberto Carlos is making it happen on a cold wet night in Stoke. Um, left Real Madrid for £120 million. Stoke have spent so much money building this team together and then they threw Danny Welbeck in it. But they've got Gordon Banks and Jack Putland in there. Gordon Banks, of course, um, one of the great England goalkeepers. Um, but so many incredible players. They must have spent an absolute fortune. You can see £158 million last season, 144, 101, 144, 209 and not getting hit by fair play on any of these seasons because the money kept on being spent. Um, and they have just managed to build an absolutely sensational squad. Rijkaard in here has had a great time joining for 85 million from Milan. Very consistent. And then Berezi as well, pretty sure I saw him. Franco Berezi, um, former Milan 
giant 82 million pound transfer again incredibly consistent as a center back there and they've got strength throughout the team but have never managed to win the premier league just the europa league which is quite disappointing um if we have a look at the club world championship if we're able to will that load up here is the club world cup you can see the past winners here pretty much just the european teams we did have this one season where penarol managed to beat um the uruguayan team managed to beat Barcelona in the final. Obviously Uruguay a couple of World Cups under their belt. Most of these players now gone. Um, but you can see their legends there on the right hand side. No surprise that Uruguay have got quite a lot of decent legends in this team. Um, but you can see some of the other teams like Portland making the final here. River Plate obviously perennial runners up in this competition which is no surprise because they have got some brilliant Argentinian legends, legends in their team. Higuain Falcao is there as well. Uh, Juan Sebastian Verón in the team. Um, and then Independiente managed to make it. A few times America managed to make it as well from Mexico. Um, if we look at their key players, they do have Rul Albuil there. Uh, Navarro's in there. Uh, Carlos McAllister, not Gary McAllister. Um, but generally, they've managed to make quite a few of those sort of finals without ever managing to win it. Penarol, the only team to break Real Madrid's dominance over this competition if we have a look at the golden ball as well um, then we can see well we can see the European golden boy which is worth a look um, mostly regions at this point but early on Rivaldo, Messi, Schick, Aliero all managing to take it um, and if we have a look at the best player in Europe then we can see Thierry Henry there winning the most recent one Ronaldo Sanchez few for Thierry Henry actually before Kabbalah uh, Ronaldo Cabal had a couple more as well. He managed to win four of them, but Thierry Henry has managed to win four. Um, and going on to the World Footballer of the Year, you can see Ronaldo has won five, four of the last six. Yeah, four of the last six. But Ronaldinho taking five of them, uh, making him the most decorated player since this save began. Zico managed to take one of them as well for Flamengo, but more recently it's been Ronaldo absolutely leading the way. Uh, the Ballon d'Or, however, slightly different makeup to him. We've got Thierry Henry winning the most recent one with Leeds. Ronaldo won it for a couple of years in a row before that. The original R9 Ronaldo. Uh, Jose Manuel Moreno has won three of them for River Plate. Thierry Henry managed to get one before that. And then you've got Rakio Mitic of Red Star Belgrade. Also 32 goals in 33 games. Shown why there. But Moreno has been unbelievable, the 36-year-old Argentinian. And you can see from his club stats here, 236 goals in 364 league games is why he is one of the most decorated players. Now, if we have a look at that World Cup, which is the last... Well, we've got the European Championships too. Um, but you can see Serbia and Argentina winning the most recent World Cups. We have a look at these stages. There is a World Cup ongoing, of course. Only one since we left off last time. Um, and in the quarterfinals, England managed to beat Sweden, Serbia 3 0 over Holland, Argentina beat Colombia, and Scotland beat Italy. In the semi finals, England beat Scotland 4 0. But in the final, it was Argentina that managed to win it 4 3 in the final. Heartbreak for England. No. Um, second world cup for them there but you can see why argentina have managed to win it because they've got an absolutely out of this world team there um i mean there's no point in me even reading out any of the names they are quite recent legends for argentina but they have managed to win the world cup over england um who have been finalists two of the three world cups now um which is a little bit unfortunate if we have a look at the european championship um, then we see France have won the most recent one after England won the one before it. France, again, like Argentina, going to have an absolutely incredible team. The likes of Zidane in there, Griezmann, Henri, Trezeguet, Pires is in there, Vieira, um, Makaleli, Desai back there, Turam as well. Um, and I can't remember the name of the Copa de Libertadores. There we go. Um, there is Copa de Libertadores winners, and I'm absolutely butchering that. But the Copa America. You can see Argentina with a couple of them. Brazil, Chile did manage to win a couple as well. At least Argentina did manage to get a couple of wins for Lionel Messi in this competition. Um, and Brazil with the one as well. We've already had a look at Argentina. World Cup and two 
Copper Americas for them as well, but you can see Brazil, they've got Kaka in there as well, Rubinho's in there. Um, Kaka, not familiar with him, uh, not with his career, I am very familiar with Kaka. I thought he would have been at AC Milan, but they did send him back to Sao Paulo, which is why we've not picked up on him too much. Um, but you can see some of the legends now right at the bottom, because they are quite a bit older and not quite able to hack it as much as they were. So I think... That has covered just about everything that there is to look at. If I have missed something, I do apologise. I couldn't go through absolutely everything because this video is already insanely long. But if you have enjoyed this very interesting series, do drop a like on the video. I might consider doing a playthrough on this series because I've thoroughly enjoyed it. So let me know what you think about that down in the comments and do drop a like if you enjoy that idea. Make sure to subscribe. There's a new England World Cup experiment out tomorrow which you'll want to check out. But until next time, see ya.